Hello, I've been having a bit of a think about my kind of limit writing journey recently and I wanted to do a video as a, a milestone or a touch point to kind of refer back to in, in future times and see whether or not I've made any progress or gone down blind alleys or whatnot. And the subject of today's video is really twofold. Uh, I want to think about when to repeat passages of words and I also want to think about the sound that words make because both of those issues have arisen in a song that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, River Run is uh, a word that's easier to sing than say um, it, and it, it's, its chorus is repeated in its entirety. This is chorus number one and chorus number two down here is identical and this is the first time I've ever done this in a song. So I want to have a think about why, you know, I don't want to do something without knowing why I'm doing it. Uh, first things first, I don't think, well, no, it's not just because I'm lazy. I, I, I knew once I'd written the chorus that I wanted it to be repeated. And I think the primary reason for that is the sense that that comforting familiarity of hearing the same words again, it's a pattern. You know, we love patterns. We find patterns in clouds and in dropped rice on the table, uh, everything. We're, we're programmed, a massive percentage of our brain is dedicated entirely to pattern recognition. We're fantastic at it. We find patterns in songs and we, we call them hooks and we listen to them and we, we hum them in the shower. And we also find patterns in words. And those are the, those are the lyrics usually coalesced into the chorus and you know, usually that's the, the hook, the, the, the chorus is the hook of the song. And very often, chorus is repeated in its entirety f for that reason because that it's easy to remember words that are just repeated multiple times but this is the first time I've done it so I was wondering what's different about this song from the others well firstly it's an out and out love song it's a completely unrepentant staring you in the face defying you to laugh at it love song sort of thing I have written love songs before but never quite this bare because it's an acoustic song and it's, it's got nowhere to hide you know it's it's front dead center and the chorus feels to me like a blanket it it kind of it wraps you up and the words make me feel good when i sing them and i want to do it again you know later on in the song after i've had a bit of a verse and a bit of a, a lyrical wonder i want to come back to the same words I want to feel that that sense of familiarity that you you enjoy in a relationship. One of the one of the great things about being in a long term relationship is that comfortable sense of familiarity with each other. And so, the, the without becoming too pompous about it, it's difficult to talk about stuff like lyrics without straying into pomposity. But I suppose you've just got to put those kind of feelings aside and say, well, can we not, can we just talk about this stuff, you know, objectively? So I think that's why I've done it. I think it um, it just feels right. I can't say it any better than that. It just feels right. But I think it's it's useful to wonder why we repeat choruses. Now, people repeat choruses in order to make a catchy tune, in order to sell more music. And that's absolutely fine. Most people would like to be listened to or, or enjoyed in whatever medium the art form comes in by the widest possible audience. And familiarity is one of the ways that you bed yourself in so that helps when you get around to the chorus you you already partially remember the words because you've heard them once and so you feel yourself you kind of just start humming them or anticipating them just before they come and then the second time you hear the song you know you're in and, and you've got it it's not something that I've ever striven for before but this seems to be a bit of a watershed moment and I'm kind of accepting that it's okay to repeat words I'm not just being lazy and having directed my kind of focused attention to, to the subject and had a, I think about some of the other great songwriters out there, some of my very favourite lyricists um, do it reasonably regularly, Sting and Paul Simon immediately um, spring to mind as people who I can quite easily find passages of, of their songs that are repeated in their entirety and utterly wonderful for it. Not, not a word of criticism will escape my lips 
I think probably my favourite example of repetition of words is actually a poem. Um, it's Red Red Rose. My my love's like a red red rose that's newly sprung in June. Um, a poem by Robbie Burns, and that second red is just genius, just absolutely fantastic. My love's like a red rose that's newly sprung in June. Is okay, you know. It's okay. It it it, it kind of sucks a little bit, but it's all right, you know. But my love's like a red red rose. Just suddenly, it's transcendent. So here's the an example of repeating words for for dramatic purpose. That I think it's okay to it's okay to do it in a single instance like this. It helps the cadence. I think it might actually have come from a song. I'm, I, I'm not sure on the... I should have really looked up the history, but I'm pretty sure it comes from a song and he, he kind of turned it into a poem sort of thing. But it's just an absolute joy to say. You know, when you when you, when you you speak those words, oh, my love's like a red, red rose. It You slow down and you enjoy and you savour the words. And this kind of concept of savouring of words brings me on to the, the second half of the very same section of lyrics that I've written uh, it's this final word river run a, a completely intriguing and wonderful word that I came across 20 years ago 20 30 years ago maybe um, it's the beginning of a novel by James Joyce called Finnegan's Wake a novel that I've never read and which sat on my bookshelf for years and every now and again, I would take it out of the bookshelf, just as, as, as a kind of general background, if you've never heard of Finnegan's Wake, it's considered to be one of the most difficult pieces of English literature ever written. You know, to, to, to actually get to the end of this book is an accomplishment, an academic accomplishment. I've attempted to read sections of it, and it's just absolute gobbledygook. It, it doesn't make any sense. The opening of the novel, where is it? That's the beginning of uh, Finnegan's Wake. And let's ju I'm just going to read it out. River run past Eve and Adams from swerve of shore to bend of bay brings us by a commodious ficus of recirculation back to Howth Castle and environs just sounds fantastic just absolutely fantastic now i have actually done a little bit of research into what that sentence means and you basically have to look up you have to research every single sentence of the of the, the book it's 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 kind of crazy but um i think there was a church called adam and eves in dublin that's the reference to that and it was on the banks of a river from swerve of shore to bend of bay um, and the, this this idea of commodious ficus of recirculation is talking about a circling back, um, a re, a coming back from somewhere to to the beginning, um, to how Howarth Castle is a, a place. The end of the novel is the first half of that. That's basically the second half of a sentence, and the first half of the sentence is at the end of the novel, and the entire novel wraps around on itself and starts again. So it's it's a concept that's like beyond my feeble brain, but I I loved it as an idea, and I first came across it and bought the book enthusiastically, um, hoping to be kind of scholarly and learned, and soon realised I'd met my match. It it beat me into submission, but I've never forgot the first word, and I love it. You know, for somebody who was um, obviously as erudite as James Joyce, the the there were you know, tales of him um, just re rejoicing for having found a good word in a day. You know, he considered it a, a good day if he found the word he wanted. So this, this guy was like the ultimate wordsmith. And he starts this novel with the word river run. And so it kind of stuck in my head. And it has lots of connotations to me that don't mean anything to anybody else. You make up your own mind what that word means. I have some of those kind of baggages inside when I come to to lyrics. You know, I have words that I just enjoy the sound of. 
and I want to find the place for in my song. And so having kind of come to my own conclusions as to what the word, and I'm deliberately not going to talk about the word itself. That's not the point. The point is that I found a beautiful sound that I want to be a part of my song. And the concept of pause for a short while this river run is exactly what I want to say. They're the right words. They're, they're some of my favourite lyrics that I've written to date. I'm really proud of them. It's worth considering the possibility. Every now and again, you'll come across a word or a phrase and think, you know what, I'm just going to chew on that for a while. That's an interesting thing to think about. And I've done that for, you know, 20 years on and off, thinking about this weird word that begins this weird novel. And it, as soon as the the music reached a point of maturity where it was ripe for having lyrics added to it that chorus was written almost live you know almost in real time as the once the, the the notes for the chorus took an absolute eternity to find but once they were there the lyrics just absolutely fell out of me and i sang pause for a short while this river run without a, a single conscious thought and instantly knew that was the right way to finish the chorus so that's really fantastic i love that concept of finding the right words and kind of chewing on them rolling them around in your brain and, and letting them just ferment and, and do the wonderful thing that they want to do and i think you know while i'm talking about words that i consider to be beautiful and phrases that i consider to be beautiful I wanted to throw in as, as one more example of this kind of concept of strange words um, juxtaposed. My all-time favourite line from any poem. Uh, this is from a poem by T.S. Eliot called The, the Love Song of J. Alfred Proofrock, uh, which is a, a, a wonderful poem. And the guy's kind of considering his place in the universe the the phrase first of all again i'm going to say it because i i never miss an opportunity to say it i should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas holy cow that's just the most wonderful sound i think it's essential for me to for, for me to not talk about what i think those words mean there's plenty of, I mean, we're talking about um, a very storied poem here. This is this is a, a very famous piece of work and has been studied ad nauseum. And so if you want to, you can get all sorts of scholarly insights and essays into what he means with these, with these words. They're separated from the rest of the poem. There's a big chunk of words beforehand, then there's that, and there's a big chunk of words afterwards. He was making a point. And... The point that he's making is entirely up to you to to think about and decide what it means. I know what those words mean to me. I think there's a rel relatively kind of easy level one identification of the the crab scuttling across the the ocean floor. You can do the the prosaic, you know. Well, he's he's referring to a crab. Now. Why are the seas silent? You know, why, what's he doing on the floor of the sea? Why is he a crab? What's the, the value of him? And you just start, you know, ragged claws. I should have been a pair of ragged claws. Oh, just awesome, awesome stuff. If I can ever write anything even half that good, I'll just be infinitely happy. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode. And uh, if you hit subscribe and click notifications, then you'll find out when my regular content gets released, including uh, River Run that I'm currently writing. And I hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.